Hello and welcome to Book Buzz Summer Edition. My name is Adam. I'm a librarian at Neighbor Boulevard Library and along with my colleague Christy we'll be discussing some of the most anticipated books of the summer. A couple of notes before we begin. Um, the dates that are listed may be changing. Uh, the the release dates of books have been changing rather rapidly during the pandemic, um, so keep an eye out for when they'll be coming. But also, all of these titles should be in our catalog, so if any of them interest you, you can feel free to put them on hold. Uh, in this section, we'll be discussing historical fiction and nonfiction. And first up is historical fiction with Christy. Okay, so first we have Mrs. Lincoln's Sisters by Jennifer Chavarini. Jennifer Chavarini writes a lot of really popular historical fiction novels, including Mrs. Lincoln's Dressmaker, which was her book previous to this one. This book centers around the fact that in 1875, the assassinated president's wife, Marriott Todd Lincoln, was committed to an asylum by her son. And so this book is not told from her perspective, but rather through the perspective of her sisters, each chapter switching between a different sister. And it's an interesting sounding novel because uh, not all of Mary Todd Lincoln's family were on the Union side. And so they're kind of looking at uh, their lives uh, during the Civil War era. And so Kirkus says that um, it, this is an engaging glimpse of women's privilege and anguish during the Civil War era. The Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. This is a debut novel and it's getting some buzz. I'm hearing quite a bit about it in different uh, areas, uh, different review journals, different media. In post-World War II England, a group of literary lovers band together to try to have a museum made in the house where Jane Austen used to live. And so they're kind of working together to try and um, make sure that, that cottage stays intact and that they can have a museum there. Um, the reviews say that it has lots of Austen book references and Publishers Weekly specifically says that it's that Austenites are in for a treat. The Color of Air by Gail Sukiyama. This book takes place in 1930s Hawaii when the Mauna Loa volcano erupted. And in this book, a doctor who now lives in Chicago returns home to Hawaii on the day the volcano erupts. Um, it says that uh, the reviews say that it's told from multiple perspectives, which can be very interesting, and Kirkus calls it well paced and lush. Miss Graham's Cold War Cookbook by Celia Rees. This book looks really interesting. Uh, it's about a former school teacher who becomes an English spy in post-World War II Germany. And her persona, um, her background that uh, she tells to people while she's there is that she is a cookbook author. And so she sends her intelligence back to England with the recipes that she's ostensibly sending back for publication. It looks really like an interesting take on this time. Um, and it looks like there's a lot of post-World War II historical fiction coming out this year, which I think is really interesting as well. Um, we had a lot of World War II things recently, and now it looks like we're getting a lot of post-World War II um, timeframes for our historical fiction. So I'm really interested in reading this one, and perhaps you will be too. Atomic Love by Jenny Fields. This book takes place in Chicago in the 1950s, so I wanted to include it because I love reading books that are set in Chicago, and I think a lot of people in this area do as well. This is about um, a physicist named Rosalind Porter who worked on the Manhattan Project, and one of the people that she worked on the Manhattan Project with, um, a gentleman that she also had a relationship with, is um, suspected of being a Russian spy. And so the FBI asks her to uh, spy on him in turn and uh, find out what's going on. Uh, however, Rosalind is also drawn to her FBI handler who is asking her to uh, do this work. And so it sounds like it's got a lot of interesting romance elements as well, but it is pretty squarely still historical fiction with a lot of um, espionage and uh, spies uh, in the Cold War era, which I think is really interesting. And again, it's set in Chicago, so it looks like a fun read, and so we'll have to check it out. Thank you, Christy. And this is Adam again, and here are some of the most anticipated nonfiction titles for summer 2020. 
The first nonfiction title is Memorial Drive, A Daughter's Memoir by Natasha Trethway. Pulitzer Prize winning poet Natasha Trethway explores the profound experience of pain, loss, and grief as an entry point into understanding the tragic course of her mother's life and the way her own life has been shaped by a legacy of love and resilience. She moves through her mother's history in the deeply segregated South and through her own childhood as a child of miscegenation in Mississippi. She plums her sense of dislocation and displacement in the lead up to the har harrowing crime that took place on Memorial Drive in Atlanta in 1985, when her former stepfather shot and killed her mother. This memoir is a compelling and searching look at a shared human experience of sudden loss, but also a glimpse at the enduring ripple effects of white racism and domestic abuse. Trethaway uses her poet's attention to language to detail this visceral exploration of racism, loss, and her growth into a prize-winning poet and author. The next book is Six Days in August, The Story of Stockholm Syndrome by David King. On the morning of August 23, 1973, a man wearing a wig, makeup, and a pair of sunglasses walked into the main branch of a prominent bank in central Stockholm. He ripped out a submachine gun, fired it into the ceiling, and shouted, the party starts. This was the beginning of a six-day hostage crisis and a media circus that would mesmerize the world. As policemen and reporters encircled the bank, the crime in progress turned into a high-stakes thriller broadcast on live television. Inside the building, meanwhile, complicated emotional relationships developed between captors and captives that would launch a remarkable new concept in the realm of psychology, hostage negotiation, and popular culture. Based on previously unpublished sources, including rare film footage and unprecedented access to the main participants, Six Days in August captures the surreal events in their entirety on an almost minute by minute basis. It is sure to be an exciting, fascinating, and illuminating book for readers this summer. Our next nonfiction book is The Heart and Other Monsters by Rose Anderson. In November 2013, Rose Anderson's younger sister Sarah died of an overdose in the bathroom of her boyfriend's home in a small town with one of the highest rates of opioid use in the state. Like many of her generation, she had become addicted to heroin. She was 24 years old. To imagine her way into her sister's life and her choices, Rose revisits their volatile childhood, marked by their abusive stepfather. As the dysfunction comes into focus, so does a broader picture of the opioid crisis and the drug rehabilitation industry in small towns across America. And when Rose learns from the coroner that Sarah's cause of death was a methamphetamine overdose, the story takes a wildly unexpected turn. The Heart and Other Monsters is a riveting, deeply personal exploration of the opioid crisis, an empathetic memoir infused with hints of true crime. And now comes one of the titles I'm most excited about for summer, Becoming Duchess Goldblatt, a memoir by Duchess Goldblatt. This is the story of a beloved Twitter account created by an anonymous author. The book is two stories, one about a reclusive real life writer who creates a fictional character out of loneliness and thin air, and that of her creation, the magical Duchess Goldblatt herself, a bright positive light in the darkness of social media. Fans of the Duchess, or her grace to many, are drawn to her lively voice, her wit, and her life-affirming love for all humanity. This book is part memoir and part joyful romp through one writer's imagination. The story of a beloved Twitter account created by a writer coming to terms with a deep grief and rebuilding it into a life worth living. Early reviews have noted the warmth, humor, and joy created by this one-of-a-kind author. And our last nonfiction title, Shuttle Houston, Life in the Center Seat of Mission Control by Paul Dye. This book is written by the longest serving flight director in NASA's history and is a revealing look at the high stakes work mission control that tells the inside story of the space shuttle program. Paul Dye 
relays stories of mission control and their grueling training in vivid detail and examines some of the highest stakes split-second decisions that the directors and astronauts were forced to make in a field where mistakes are unthinkable. Putting readers in the shoes of mission control, Dai gives readers his own front row seat on the missions that changed our world. And that's it for nonfiction and historical fiction book buzz. Thank you for listening. We hope you found some great new titles to put on hold at the library, and we look forward to sharing more new books with you in August. Thank you.